Back in the beginning of 1990s, when Industrial Light and Magic was preparing a digital revolution in VFX with Jurassic Park. Huge and incredibly expensive silicone graphics computers were used for 3D graphics. The knowledge and technology was available to few. But that was to be changed. Thanks to computers, that were ahead of its time. It became possible to create 3D graphics and visual effects right on your desk. The Commodore Amiga Computer Back in the day, computer-generated effects were still a new thing and almost exclusively restricted for high-budget movies. But even traditionally created effects were usually unreachable by TV production's budgets. There was usually a huge visual gap between movie and TV productions. A revolution came with Emmy Award-winning Babylon 5, a show that was way too big for TV, so it needed a new approach. We were really pioneering a lot of the use of CGI in television for the first time. And the only way that we felt that we could do the visual effects at the budget that we had to make Babylon 5 at was to change from the conventional use of models and miniatures to the quickly developing computer graphic effects. We could deliver visual effects that were on a par with the best that was on television and perhaps things that had never been seen on television. A company named Foundation Imaging was formed by Ron Thornton and Paul Bagel Bryant to deliver VFX for the series. With their budget, they could have get one silicone graphics station or several not expensive Amiga computers, which they did. At the beginning of what we were doing with Babylon 5, computer effects were limited to extremely large budgets and some of the stuff that was being done was incredibly difficult. Our job was to try to take existing technology for other things and turn those technologies into something that would be acceptable on a network television show. We had our choice of going with, with essentially inexpensive computers and having a lot of them or having one or two really, really expensive computers and, and trying to figure out how to do the show that way. Because we had so many shots every week, I mean, we averaged 90 shots a week, which is unheard of in television in 1993. All VFX shots for Babylon 5 were designed on an accelerated Amiga 2000 with a video toaster board in it, using Lightwave 3D and modular 3D software. The pilot episode, The Gathering, was rendered by eight interconnected Amiga 2000 computers with video toaster boards, which were connected to an IBM computer that stored the images in five gigabytes of memory. For computer graphics, you design shots that the limitations of a motion control rig could handle. By making the choice to make Babylon 5 computer graphic, it meant that we could do anything we wanted with those models. We could spin them, we could tumble them, we could have the camera fly around them, and it made the style of the show distinctly different from anything that came before it because we were free to move the ships and the camera anywhere we wanted. Uh, you could go from 20 miles out, zoom in through a window, and end up on a character's face in one continuous push-in, which you can never do in models. Although this was revolutionary, it had a lot of limitations. The computers had 2 megabytes of RAM and a 60,000 polygon limit on any object. So building models to fit into that small memory, including the application, was tough. The artists were also limited by 24-bit image maps, a combination of 16 and 32-bit color images. For comparison, in the Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom from 2018, the T-Rex 3D model was over 200 million polygons. Amiga computers at the time were more powerful and versatile than PC or Mac. And what's even more important, they were a lot cheaper. Amiga always had a reputation of a computer for creative people. Thanks to its multimedia capabilities and wide range of software, it had a multitasking operating system that integrated the video and audio capabilities and offered a graphic user interface and a text mode command line. With these machines, coupled with new text hardware post-production and editing suite, the video toaster and its accompanying 3D modeling software, Lightwave, initially Amiga exclusive, Many movie and TV producers gravitated towards this platform. Video Toaster offered video switching, chroma keying, character generation, animation, and image manipulation tools that convincingly rivaled the high-end gold standard equipment, favored by the professionals, only on a shoestring budget. On Babylon 5, 3D modeling and rendering were not the only tasks the Amigas were used for. Video Toaster expansion cards and the software made it possible to create digital set extensions, 
and combine live action footage, shot on blue screen, with CG elements or matte paintings. Some clever techniques, like crowd multiplication, by combining several pieces of footage, help to overcome budget shortages and create huge armies without hiring hundreds of extras. It allowed to build a lush and visually compelling world, not seen before in TV series. This sci-fi world obviously also needed alien life forms, as some of them were done with actors and prosthetics. Other had to be created entirely in 3D. The VFX team quite successfully designed and created several organic creatures, that were later composited into live-action plate. That was an impressive achievement, considering that before, believable CG characters were created only in few productions, like Terminator 2, The Abyss or Young Sherlock Holmes. And those were created with super expensive SGIs and huge budgets. The foundation imaging pioneering work on Babylon 5 caused a revolution, and people began to take notice that the work was being done on amateur desktop machines, rather than expensive SGIs. They've helped popularize using the software package Lightwave 3D on US TV shows for CGI visual effects, which led to it becoming an industry standard throughout the 1990s. Still today this is a popular 3D software. Later Foundation Imaging worked on Star Trek Voyager series, which brought them two Emmy Awards. Another great example of utilizing Amiga computers for VFX was Amblin Imaging. A visual effects house originally formed by Steven Spielberg and Universal Studios. For the television show Sequest DSV. The team consisted of 8 animators and a rendering farm, comprised of more than 60 Amigas. Without a miniature model in sight, all the exterior perspectives of the submarine, shots of various communities, machines or small vessels, were created using Lightwave. At the time, Sequest was the most expensive TV show ever produced, racking up monstrous bills of 5 million per episode. Notably it features more special effects than The Empire Strikes Back. Amblin Imaging was helping to create visual effects on shows like Star Trek Voyager, or Young Indiana Jones Chronicles, as well as pre-visualization for Jurassic Park, all using their Amigas. Through years, many VFX companies introduced Amiga computers to their pipeline. There is a long list of movies and TV shows, where Amigas were used. Among them, Total Recall, Star Trek VI, James Bond movie GoldenEye, Robocop 2, Free Jack, Quantum Leap, and many others. Amiga computers and the work of companies like Foundation Imaging, Amblin Imaging and New Tech, made it possible to create special effects on a home computer. But more importantly, it created a whole generation of computer artists, allowing enthusiasts, all over the world, to learn and play with 2D and 3D graphics, animation, sound and music, paving the way for today's VFX industry. Unfortunately, due to several factors, bad management is one of them, Commodore bankrupted in 1994, ending the development of a Amiga platform. However the digital revolution in 3D graphics continued on PC computers. If you'd like to get more interesting videos about VFX and its history, don't forget to subscribe.